What's up guys? Andy, Forest Z Nana, uh, runner. First live session tonight. Um, bear with me two seconds, just setting everything up. I hope you can see me all right. I'm just gonna get what I can see on here so I can make sure it's all okay. And welcome to the first live stream. Really excited tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you're watching, open up the chat, say hi. Uh, let's get talking. i um, got a topic tonight, as you've probably seen by the thumbnail, it is going to be trail running versus road running. Um, now, living where I live, I'm surrounded by trails, really lucky. So I run a lot on the trails, but I also do a lot of road races. Um, and I just thought I'd share with you tonight the races that I've done this year, my ratio of trail to road races, my pros and cons for both, what I like about training on roads, what I like training about on trails, and throw the debate out there. What do you guys like? Why do you prefer trails? Why do you prefer roads? All of that good stuff. So if you're joining us now, welcome. I'm just getting the chat up now. Um, I actually have no idea how to get the chat up on here. So just seeing if I can work that out. Got it. So I'm going to put something in there. Now. Awesome. First comment. Chris, how are you doing, mate? Ooh, exciting times. Hey, mate, won't be able to stay long. Just heading to work, but I'll watch the live discussion later for the record. I've done more road than trails, but trails are softer. Awesome. I was going to say, watching your latest video, mate, with um, with your night run, uh, that looked awesome. That looked really good fun. I've got a night run coming up in about a month or so. Seven Bridge night race. That's five miles. Looking forward to that one. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, who else have we got? James, hello mate, you okay? Uh, Jeffrey, how you doing mate? Thank you so much for your uh, post into Running Films Connect earlier. You're more hot on it than I am, so that's brilliant, trying to encourage people to come along. So thank you guys. Um, so tonight, as I said, let's talk about road versus trail. Um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to uh, talk about my races, going to talk about my um, what I've done, what I prefer, pros and cons. All the meantime, post your questions in the chat, we'll get to the end of that, we'll go through your questions, what you prefer, and um, well, I'll, then I'll just answer any questions that you have um, from my own personal experience. So guys, just remember this is just me, just an amateur runner, nothing special. So. I've written down some notes. I've written down the list of um, races that I've done this year so you can see what I've done in comparison to what um, maybe you've done or what other people do. So obviously for new guys and girls joining the channel, welcome. I'm based in the Forest of Dean, surrounded by trails, woods. 90% of my running is on the trails. Come winter time, the evenings get darker. I'll be on the roads a little bit more, but where I can, I'll run in the mornings on the trails. Um, <clears throat> this year, we have uh, we have run, um, we have run fourteen races, or we will be running fourteen races, potentially fifteen, but fourteen for sure. Um, we've run or will be running Fission Twenty Twenty, which was a twenty mile race, my first race vlog of the year back in March. Um, the only race of the year that didn't go to plan, that was Road, uh, the Forest of Dean Spring Half, that was Trail, uh, Sketches 10k in May, that was Trail, uh, the Fountain 5 Mile Local Athletics Club race, that was Trail, uh, Dimmock, uh, yeah, Dimmock Half Marathon, that was Road, Gloucester 10k was Road, Blazon 10k was Road, my marathon that I did on my own, so it's not an official race, but I classed it as a race because I trained for it and I made it my own race. That was Trail, uh, Ross 10k Trail, Spring Mile, that was at the track, um, the Forest of Dean Autumn Half was Trail, and the Brecon Beacons 22k Trail race that I did last weekend, that was Trail. Now, two more to come, Seven Bridge Night Race, uh, Road, Newman 9 Road. So, in all of that, I've got six road races that I'll be doing this year, seven Trail one was track. So I've got a good balance. I've done more races this year um, than I would have normally done. I think last year it was about 10 or 11. Um, but I've definitely got a good mix in there uh, this year to feel like I can give you guys some of my opinions on what I think on trails and road. Now, my personal preference um, is running on trails. However, I class myself better at road running than trails. So 
let's get into it, guys. My first question to you, and I'll come to the questions in a bit in the chat. I'm just watching the chat now. Um, I'm seeing all the questions come in, so I'll read them in a minute. Um, my first question to you guys is, what do you prefer, trail or road, and why? Post those comments in the chat, and I'll come to those in a minute. So, here we go. My personal preference um, being trail, but let's talk about road first, because road is where I get my PBs, road is where I enjoy the speed. So for me, the pros of road running, for sure, have got to be, as a competitive runner, or someone that has a competitive spirit, um, clocking low minute mile pace. I can't do that on trails with the undulation, um, unless it's a flat trail race, but you don't get flat trail races. Road running, I love the buzz of clocking low minute mile pace. When when you run roads, you can see what you're made of in terms of speed. Um, I love it. Last year I came into my own towards the end of the year. I'm hoping I'm going to do the same again this year, even though we've had a great year of running. Last year, Seven Bridge Night Race and the New at Nine, I did really well at. Um, I'm really hoping I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to get a real kick out of running flat for, for five miles, 10k. So I'm looking forward to those. That's For me personally, I get a real buzz out of doing that. Um, uh, and, it, and I do find it's more competitive road races. I find more competition. Um, trail racing... When I go racing, well, for example, the Brecon race I did last weekend, I'm a, I'm, I class myself, although I run on trails, I class myself more of a road runner in terms of races. So when I hit the trails, that type of race, I came fourth, as I said, not sure how, but I was in no man's land for a long time. There was two other people behind me, if you followed the vlog, and third to fifth place, that was it. And if you actually looked at the results of the race, there was like the top 10 was spaced out over like 15 minutes. It, it was crazy, whereas in a road race, you've got a lot more competition, a lot more buzz, um, people around you. You left your own device a little bit more on the trail, which I do enjoy, but at the same time, I enjoy the push of a, a road. When you can hang on to the back of someone, if you've got someone behind you pushing you, you bring out the best of yourself. You are a crash and burn or you do really well. So I enjoy that, but obviously with road running comes the worries of injury. If I ever get sore shins or, or niggles, it tends to be because I've pounded the pavements too much, um, which is why I try and steer clear of pavements. Um, but from that perspective, the road for me gives me that kick, that buzz of speed work. Now trails, the reason I enjoy trails, A, because I train on them, but B, it's the challenge. Trails are challenging. Do a trail race, it's it's challenging in a different way to road. Road, you've got to try and hold a pace for a certain amount of time. If you're competitive like me, or competitive with yourself, you want to do well, you want to hold a pace for a time. On the trails, it's challenging. Me and James will always talk about how challenging certain trail races are, and, and I've been thinking about doing a race like I did with Brecon's last weekend, and obviously Chris uh, gave me the kick up the backside to, to have a sweaty palm moment. I'm like, yeah, and it was the best thing I did because all year I didn't have to run that race, but I did. And it was a challenge. It was a buzz. I finished it. It was an amazing sense of achievement. So I love the challenge of a trail race. Um, the undulation. I'm not so good at the undulation, but I enjoy it, but I'm not so good at it. If you ever watch me and James run or if, if you could watch us run... We run on a flat and I might edge out in front. The second you hit a hill, he's like up that hill like a gazelle. It's insane. And, and I'm not I'm not so good on hills. Um, but I do enjoy the challenge. Even though I'm not good, I do enjoy the challenge of pacing. Because it's a different type of pacing. You've got to know when to hold back, know when to push. On a road, you just push. Um, unless it's a hilly road race, like Dimmock was earlier in the year. Um, and... It's obviously better to run on more regularly trails, softer, better on the joints, muscles, tendons, all that sort of stuff. Um, naturally, if you run on softer surfaces, you're less likely to get injured. Um, so I enjoy that. But obviously with um, the trails, I don't get the buzz of that consistent split that I would on, on a road. However, that's a real minor thing. That's why trails edge it for me. I do prefer trails for sure. Um, but then you get into the whole easy trail races versus tough trail races. Now, this is just, you know, and you guys will be able to simp you know, understand because I follow a lot of you and a lot of you run what I call proper trail races. Now, the Forest of Dean Autumn and Spring Half Marathons are trail races, but they're, they're very flat, fire roady type trails. They're not technical in any way, shape or form. They say you can wear road shoes. So although you're running on a trail, it's not, it's not a technical trail. 
now it's just hilly. I enjoy that, but then I go and run something like Brecon Beacons last year where you start off and within 200 metres you are up a farmer's field you know, like vertical walking up to the top of a mountain, then flying down at the other side, around the side of the mountain, climbing up and up and up to the top of a mountain where it's so windy you can't even hear yourself. Um, and then you're, you're running across the ridge line, and then you drop back down, then you've got another final hill. And I'm talking, these are mountains, guys. These aren't hills, these are mountains you're climbing. And that's the difference between, I think, a proper trail race, and I'm not being disrespectful, but the, the, the Forest of Dean type of runs, they're fantastic, but a proper trail race, guys, a proper one. That Brecon's one was an eye-opener, my first ever one. Me and James did uh, one at Simmons Yacht, which is 20 minutes down the road from us in the Y Valley, and um, it was literally like 1,500 foot I think was it James I think it was about 1500 foot of climbing now that was quite hilly over a half marathon but this Brecon's one was th over 3,000 3,300 foot it's just a different ball game and I'm really enjoying it and obviously guys in the chat room wish James the best of luck he's got his ultra 31 mile ultra next week not this weekend next weekend uh, down in Exmoor in the UK um, that's 6,000 foot of climbing it's gonna be insane but he's gonna do really well so Let's see what you guys are putting in the chat. Um, let's have a quick look. Right, go back to the top. Uh, Ian, tr Ian Bettis, trail all the way. Nice one, mate. I know, obviously, where we live. So, Ian, if you didn't see my... Um, guys, if you didn't see my video the other day talking about the announcement of the live stream, I said Ian is a, a vlogger on YouTube. He's just picked it back up. Um, go and check out his channel, click on his profile. He's a he's a local chap to me, lovely chap, go and check it out. He's just done a review today, which I haven't watched, mate, but I will watch in a bit. Um, Chris, great, yeah, the night run was a challenge, awesome stuff. Oh, good man, all right, so you're off now, mate. Anyway, enjoy work, enjoy it. Uh, Ian, Ian, decent head torch is a must, definitely. Well, okay, guys, I'm gonna, this is, okay. You might not have this issue where you live, but where we live in the Forest of Dean, there are, there's lots of wildlife, and there's one particular animal which I am petrified of, and it's the wild boar. Now, we have a lot of wild boar. You go to anywhere else in the world where they have wild boar, and you might get the old rogue one, but as a whole, they're scared of humans, because humans um, uh, deal with them, should we say. Around here, <laughs> they are let to breed run loose um, the forest is, in is not a big area and I think they counted something like over 1500 boar in the area now you get packs and packs and packs of boar growing and then individual males being dominant in a pack and then the other one being kicked out and then you have these rogue males roaming around or or um, protective mum, mummy boar um, you get chased a lot I've been chased a lot James uh, has been with me when we've been in standoffs James James got wiped out by a boar not for the boar charging him but James startled the boar the boar cut out in front of him on the trail wiped him clean out and the piglets ran into his side like bullets um, he was a bit shaken after that I mean it's I may yeah get a head torch but I ain't running in the forest of Dean at night time I can assure you of that no night series runs for me um, Jeffrey, hey Chris, bye Chris. Uh, hello Ian and James, Chris, hi Jeff. Uh, James, sorry, I only just got the video working. Ian, when is the Seven Bridge Night Race? It is on the, oh gosh mate, I don't know, it's the first week in November, it's the first Wednesday in November, but there's spaces for the Friday as well, and if you apply for the Friday, they're running two of them, so the Wednesday night I'm doing, the Friday, um, is still open I think you can apply for that and then you can ask to put in a transfer to the Wednesday if you want to race but running over the seven bridge at night time stunning um, Welsh Dover oh Welsh Doberman hello mate how are you um, November the 7th is a night race so you know about it brilliant okay are you racing it are you gonna race it will I see you there I'm doing the seventh one I'm assuming seventh is the, is the Wednesday uh, Jeffrey, definitely trail. It's more challenging but enjoyable. I like the road for the speed, but it's so boring. <laughs> yeah, I do agree. Um, it depends what road race you do, mate, I think. If you do a pan-flat road race, um, it can get a bit boring. But at the same time, 
for me, that's the challenge, definitely the challenge of going quicker, for sure. Um, and also, it depends where you do the road race. If you do it in a city and you get to take in the sights, if you can even manage to take in the sights whilst you're concentrating on running fast, then awesome. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. It does get a bit boring. I, me and James, we train on our local industrial estate. <clears throat> I recorded some footage last night on my new GoPro Hero 5. Check it out. check it out um, in the dark we'll see how that comes out video out next week um, but by the time March April comes around next year when the clocks change we cannot wait to get off the roads um, tra Ian trail is more engaging better scenery and challenging yeah definitely mate I do agree it is it is definitely challenging and I think with the trail what you can do is you can set yourself a route and you know the area like me it's um, you can pick a route that's either ascending or descending, um, how many hills you want to put in it, however you want to have it, you can make it as challenging as you want, then you can just go out and blast that, rather than just looping around a flat road, you can go out, test yourself, and in a race where you might hold back on a hill to then fly down it, I, what I like to do in training is I like to push hard up the hills, really practice getting the hill work done so that... Uh, so that come race day the hills aren't so challenging but definitely agree with you mate um, James I think trail is more about the adventure road is pure racing that's a good way of summing it up yes I agree the trail is definitely about the adventure again going back to my first point depends what type of trail if it's like the Forest of Dean half marathons type of trail where the trail is it's just a trail but if you slapped it on a road it would just be a hilly half marathon then um, debatable but if you do something like the Brecon ones or the ultra that you're going to do definitely 100% it's more about the challenge road is about getting the adrenaline going get the competition around you pure race yeah definitely um, Ian, we live in too good an area for just ride and running. We do, mate, 100%. I tell so many people where we live, and guys, for you guys that aren't here, we're so lucky to live in an area where we live where we have forests on our doorstep. I just want to tell people to get outside on your bike, running, explore the trails. It is a breath of fresh air. People take for granted where we live, 100%, and they need to get out there and enjoy it. Jeffrey, exactly, James. Yes, he made a good point. Um, Ian, I agree, James. Yes, exactly. James, Simmons Yacht last year was the best local trail event. It was the only local trail event. It was good. When we saw it, um, me and James saw it advertised, we were buzzing, and uh, it was run by a company called Maverick. If you're in the UK, check out Maverick uh, Races. They do awesome races. It's the same people that I did the Brecon through last weekend. And when we did the race, we were so buzzing. Me and James came. Did we come third or fourth or fourth or fifth? I don't know. We did quite well. And uh, we were wet and they said, oh, 2017's fixtures or, or races have been announced. And we were like going to book it straight away. We we're like, we are coming back here. And they didn't put it on this year. We were gutted, which is why I was umming and ahhing about what to do this year in terms of a challenge. And I looked on and the nearest one to me was Brecon. So that's why I did that one. But I would have done Simmons Yes again. But having said that, I'm now glad I did Brecon's for sure. <clears throat> Jeffrey, good luck. Thank you, mate. Ian, thank you. Good luck for Trail Ultra. Yes. So, oh, sorry, Jeffrey, you say good luck to James. Yes, yeah. Good luck, James. Yeah. Ian, good luck for the Trail Ultra. The Vegan Runner. The Vegan Runner. How are you doing, mate? Vegan Runner, thank you so much for answering my message earlier. Really appreciate it. Um, I asked uh, Vegan Runner, who does live streams a lot with his phone, like I'm doing with my phone now, does it take up storage? Because <laughs> I had this stomach sinking feeling earlier that I'd have to clear out my phone of storage because this would be recording onto my phone but it's not streaming to YouTube so thank you mate for your quick response. How are you doing mate? I hope your uh, running's going well. Your race the other weekend was awesome. 36.15 for a 10k or 100 meters off 10k. That's amazing. I can't Strava stalk you anymore so I can't see how you're doing but I hope you've picked up from that purple patch you had a while ago. Hope training's going well, mate. Um, road running is the best for races. Trail running is the best for training, in my opinion. Yes, and I'm coming to that. It's on my notes. <laughs> Just wait. Um, I do a lot of biking, single track, tight, twisty and technical. Yes, mate, you do indeed. I've seen um, Strava. 
James, third and fourth. Yes, we did, didn't we? Third and fourth. But we didn't get a prize. It was the only race we didn't get a prize for. Um, we didn't have prizes for first, second, third. But our names were on the website, so it was all good. Uh, Ian, just a quick plug for the website I have found called Just Do It. It's a great website for all sorts of events, both running and cycling. Nice one, mate. That's awesome. Just Do It. Okay, sweet. I'll have a look at that afterwards. Bays, Maverick. I thought it was... I thought that was a Mel Gibson. <laughs> oh, that was a Mel Gibson film. My friend Scott raves about the Maverick series, mate. They are incredible. If you get a chance, do it. Um, Brian, Brian, how are you doing, mate? Awesome to see you. Um, don't apologise for being late. You ran the Oxford half recently. How did it go? I don't. Not sure I've seen. Or I might have liked it on Strava, but I can't remember. I hope it went well. Um, James, I lie. Second and third. No, we didn't come second. No, we didn't, mate. I, I'm sure it was third and fourth. The Irish f Fun Runner. The Irish Fun Runner, how you doing, mate? Really enjoyed your video the other day about um, uh, your, your old training methods when you were at boarding school and your um, the training methods that your dad implemented for you and getting the whole pace stuck in your head and it's something that took a while to shift. I agree with that. And that was something I was going to talk about soon. Similar to you, my heart rate monitor broke. I was so reliant on it um, all year and recently it's broken and um, I've found a new lease of life, life running without it and suddenly I've gone from stop staring at the stats of my heart rate to actually just running by feel. It's made the world a difference. A similar concept there. really enjoyed it. Um, what's your opinion on recovery pace? Um, I run my recovery runs and I filmed one on Monday and it will be coming out next week at least uh, a minute slower than marathon pace at least. So... My half marathon pace around here is 6.42 on flat roads. It's going to be about 6.30. Uh, marathon pace will be around 7.10-ish. I run my recovery mo uh, runs well over 8-minute miles. And I mean well over, some some into 8.30. So to totally chilled, 100%. I watched an amazing video on Ryan Hall, the American marathoner, um, ages ago. And he was like, take your, you know, take your easy days easy, like super easy. Don't even set a pace, just run easy because when the sessions come around, you need to give it your all and you don't want to be drained from, from, um, pushing too hard in your recovery runs. You want to be fresh. So my recovery run on Monday was about eight, eight, 10 minute mile pace. I think it was on Strava and that led to a super session last night with James um, so yeah, definitely at least a minute slower than marathon pace. Anyway guys, just before any more questions come in, I'm going to go back to the final thing which um, uh, one, uh, the vegan runner just said, which was trails training. So my final notes on roads versus trails is 100% training. Now, my point was going to be, and he's just said it, Training on roads, you get quicker paces, obviously. If I go and run 200 metre reps on trails as opposed to roads, I'm going to run them quicker on a road. So that's a fact because your shoes, grippiness, um, slipping and sliding on the trails a little bit more. You haven't got that traction of tarmac. I always find I can run reps a lot quicker on, well, not a lot quicker, but a little bit quicker on roads. So you get the speed. Um, trails, I personally think it toughens you up. My winning formula for me has always been train on trails, race on roads. If I train on the trails, I do really well. So winding back to January, guys, when I trained for the Fission 2020, the 20 mile race, I ran my 20 mile race plan, which I share with you in a series, and I ran all my training on roads. And I failed miserably in the race. I got to 15 miles, I was done. Um, I then, for my marathon, did the same plan and a little bit more, but I trained on trails. And I ran, an, I ran a 314 marathon around here. Um, and I always train on trails. And whenever I train and get a good session on trails, I always do really well on the road. It's it's almost like you can take you can knock off, you can knock off like five almost five seconds a mile. Um, so if I'm running six thirty fives on trail, I can run a six thirty on the road type thing. Maybe even ten seconds sometimes depends due to the undulation, the lack of grip on the trail because it's obviously it can be loose gravel. Um, the second you put your light race flats on and hit the tarmac you feel like you're running on air. It's incredible. So vegan run is 100% right. Train on the trails if you can uh, race on the road. It's the perfect formula. It's a winner every time for me. I, at the moment, I'm training on the trails. Did my reps on the industrial estate last night on the roads because it was night time. I couldn't go on the trails, but tomorrow I will try and get on the trails for my threshold session um, for sure. And that's what I'll continue to try and do. So guys, that's kind of my take on trails versus roads. 
Um, any other questions, obviously, uh, about trails and roads, whack them in the um, comments. I'm going to go through some more comments now, see where we're at, where do we get to. Um, guys, I made a cup of tea as well, and I've left it over on the side there, and I can't reach it. <laughs> oh, have I? Where is it? Have I left it on the table? I don't know what I've done with it, guys. I've made a cup of tea, and I haven't got it here. Oh, here it is, behind my laptop. James, we did, we're both on their website. Are we still on there, mate? I don't think we are anymore. If you can, send me the link. <laughs> I couldn't find it this year. Brian, Brian, I didn't actually. Oh, drunk driver hit our parked car on the Saturday just before, and it was impossible to get up there. Oh, mate. Oh, that's terrible, having issues with, uh, uh, hold on, let me try and pronounce this. Oh, pa patella femoral, patella femoral pain. So fate made the best decision for me. Oh, gutted. How are you doing now? And what's, okay, what's your next race? Or what's your next plan then after that? I'm sorry to hear that, mate, that's terrible. What's your next race coming up? The Irish, ah, the Irish, Fun runner, what sports have you done other than running football? So I played on the wing for eight, nine years, sprinting up and down, which is why I think I'm better at shorter, faster races. I always do really well. So if you ever read books and they have projected running charts, um, a lot of my running friends, including James, uh, including Lee, who you might have seen in previous videos, and, and a lot of people, they say if you can run a 5k in this, you should be able to run a 10k in that, and a half marathon in this, and a marathon in this, and so on and so forth. They um, project your times. And most of the time, my friends' times have been within like a minute of those things. So James ran a 10k, and then last year he went and ran a 126 half marathon, which is kind of what he was predicted. At that time, I was running a quicker 10k than him, but I was running a 130 half marathon. My my times are not um, uh, that they don't. My the longer distance I go, the worse I am, if that makes sense. And that's why I'm working so hard now at uh, trying to run more half marathons and marathons stronger. Um, but I think that's why I'm quite good at 10k because I can run a 37.53 as my PB 10k, which means I should, in 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 theory, run a 123, 124 half marathon. I reckon I could do a 125, and I will be doing one before the end of the year. But I doubt I'll be doing, uh, doubt I could do a 123, 124. Um, so football. Um, I never ran in my life. Uh, I used to hate running at school, so I never ran. Um, if I did run, I was always you had. 10 runners in the 1500 meters at school you'd have the one kid that whizzed around that was never out of breath that was just a freak of nature you had the one kid that just walked the whole thing and i was ninth place that walked and ran hated it absolutely hated running until three years uh two and a half years ago when i when i've taken it up got bored of football um although i am playing a little bit at the moment um uh, so football or soccer for international viewers is what i was doing on the wing sprinting up and down um, Bayes, go get it. What was that in relation to, mate? Don't know, what was that in relation to? Not sure. Brian, I don't really have trails in my area, but have got some grass. Same effect, I'm guessing. 100%, mate, yeah, because you haven't got the grip. I mean, grass is, well, it's not going to give you the same effect as trails in terms of the undulation, but it's going to give you, it's, it's going to be better for your joints, for sure, training on grass than roads. And if you do some strides on there and, and some reps and things, um, it's going to be better on your joints. It's going to be softer surface. It's going to be, you're going to be clocking times a little bit slower than you would on the road. But when you come to doing them on the road, if you did a set of reps on the trails and then, or grass and then on the road, you notice a difference for sure, 100%. I do anyway. <clears throat> Baze, hope the drink driver got locked up. Yeah, mate, definitely. What an idiot. People don't realise what effect these things have. Um, Brian, yes, yeah, sat car written off. It was written off. Flipping Nora. Got a decent offer on it, so it could have been worse. I'm running the Brighton 10K next month. That's amazing, and nothing concrete after that. Well, do you know what, mate? That's going to be awesome. Is that a flat, fast one? What are your goals for that? What are you, what are you hoping to do? Run pain-free or set a time? How is the pain from that word I couldn't pronounce a minute ago? 
the Vink the Irish Fun Runner, would you ever consider going vegan? I am vegetarian, mate. Um, I have been for uh, over two years now, I think. Best thing I ever did. And I border on... I'm closer to being vegan than I am meat eater. So I don't eat a lot of dairy anyway. It's My downfall is things like chocolate and things that contain milk powder and stuff like that rather than dairy. I've got dairy-free butter and all of that. Um, it's kind of... Um, not an excuse, but when you have a family and you have kids, I don't want to instill my values on them. I made the decision to go vegetarian when I was older. I think it's an important decision to let your kids grow up and um, understand. They're starting to understand now. They eat a lot of vegetarian food anyway and vegan food with us. Um, but at the same time, they'll have meat at school. It's up to them what they do. I'm not one of these people that will push my uh, opinions on them but I'm I am already vegetarian I eat a very I do eat a plant-based diet anyway um so yeah but I I should think so at some point one day yeah I mean it's just the house at the moment having the kids and that I can't I'm not in a position to buy a vegan this for me and then something else for them um but on the whole I would say I'm far closer to being vegan than the meat eater um the tea, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, the tea, Jeffrey. I found it. Flipping Nora. <laughs> it's a British thing, mate. <laughs> uh, right. Awesome. We're up to date on the questions. So, guys, um, in terms of... So, just before um, I say um, we have any more final questions, um, I'm just going to kind of rewind a little bit back to the... Uh, race um, and in the meantime whilst I do this feel free to post any other questions now in the chat because after this little story and then the questions we'll call it a night and thank you so much for watching um, so uh, the Brecon's race just going back to that and the difference in trail racing so I didn't really give the, the race a full recap and I just want to kind of go through it a little bit more in detail um, from my mindset because I think mindset is important and it's definitely something I'm going to do a talk on is the mindset the running mindset um, I rocked up there and I parked up and you probably saw the photos of the finish of the start line and everything and I literally I saw these flags and this is the type of race where they put little spokes uh, spikes in the ground with flags on and you've got to follow the flags it ain't marshalled or anything like that and I and I looked up this hill and I stood there and I was just like Oh man, and I whizzed out of the blocks, 20, 200 metres, no, less than that, 100 metres, we, we went up this hill, and everyone, so you heard these thudding footsteps, and then suddenly just turned to walk, and I, being a road runner, so this is, this is going to be the point of this, is a road runner going to trails, or a flatter trail runner going to trails, I looked up this hill, and I thought, okay, well if I keep a light steady plod, I'll get up and I was pulling away from everyone and there was a little group of us at the front and it was the worst decision ever. I should have walked, you know, sometimes you get to a point where it's more cons um, energy conserving to walk than run, um, but I was push pushing myself to run because I hadn't even run a quarter of a mile and I was thinking, come on man, anyway, we got to the top of this hill and we climbed and walked for a, a good mile and a half before we then flew down the other side. And when I say fly down the other side, it wasn't like a flat track. Let me try and... It wasn't a flat track. There was tracks either side. There was a gully in the middle with water gushing through it and stones and rocks everywhere. I saw these three guys in front of me fly down this hill, technically, like Killian Jornet, you know, flying down this hill. And there's me tiptoeing at 10-minute mile pace when I should have been making up the time and going up, but I was literally almost walking down this hill. So all the time I'd made up from the people behind me going up the hill, they then caught me. So by the time I got to the back bottom of that hill, um, at two miles, everyone was back behind me again. But what happens is when you're a road runner going to these trail races, the second you hit anything runnable, I was able to pull away. Like it was, it was really bizarre through the whole race, anything runnable. And this is the pack behind me and this is me. I would just pull away. And the second I got to a climb, everyone would catch me back up. And the second I got something runnable, yeah? So you get the idea, anything runnable, I could, I could, put my distance between me and the people behind me but anything that's involved climbing or hills that's my, my failing so I, I do think there's an element of specialising in trails I think if you want to be good at trails you definitely got to specialise it I took a punt went there came forth with no expectations whatsoever didn't mean to I just went to run taught me a lot of lessons taught me that it was 
more than okay to walk. I said to James yesterday, I walked about 25% of the race. Um, but from a road runner going to that sort of race, it is like a culture shock. You know, it's like going from the Forest of Dean here in this quaint little area into the heart of London and being like, whoa, you know, it's so different. And I look like a road runner. I had my short shorts, my green top, and all the other people around me had their backpacks and their um, buffs on and their beards and their longer hair, typical trail runner. Um, and, you know, there was me. Just me, carrying a fruit shoot bottle with some tailwind in it that I nicked from the kids' stash up there. Um, it was it was just crazy, and I looked I looked the part, and I looked like a fish out of water. Um, but hey, do you know what? From lessons learned, any road runners going to thinking to challenge themselves like I did, do it 100%. You won't regret it, but beware, and don't be afraid to walk. It is okay to walk. So anyway, that's my final spiel on trail running, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's go back to the questions. Um, uh, oh, mate, Irish fun runner. Unfortunately, the audio is not great. It goes mute sometimes. Sorry, guys. Is everyone hearing that or not? Or is it just is it just you? If everyone can just let me know if that is, because I'll fix that for next week. Um, Baze, I've enjoyed the live, mate. Thanks. No worries, mate. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Um, Brian, hoping near 50 minutes. Wow, fair play, mate, but depends on my knee. But if I keep distances short at the moment, definitely wise then for the 10k. So going to try and wing it and hope my half training did for Richmond last month will help. It definitely will, mate. Just keep up the consistency now, if you can. Don't just drop it off. Keep up the consistency and you'll be fine. Uh, Brian, Richmond half, that is, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, don't worry, Andy, I have the same issue with hills. It's something I'm trying to work on to get better at. Got to get these glutes stronger. I don't know what your job is, mate, but being a web designer, I sit on my backside day in, day out. My glutes are constantly deactivated. Now, before I go on any run, uh, I have to activate my glutes through various exercises. And if I don't, um, and I go out because I'm like, I don't have time, I will uh, get tight hamstrings because my hamstrings are doing the work of the glutes and I get a tight lower back. I suck, being six foot six, I suffer really badly with a, a lower back issues all the time permanently I'm always in pain for one reason or another it's either mild pain that I can manage or it's excruciating at the moment it's mild but off the back of Brecon Beacons it was excruciating um, and that's partly to do with my glutes not firing because I sit on my backside all day today I got up um, I drove 40 minutes that way to Gloucester um, for a meeting, sat on my backside for two hours, came back to my house in the Forest of Dean, uh, then went an hour and a bit the other way to Cardiff, sat on my backside in the car to then sit and wait for an appointment, to then come back from Cardiff um, to now be sitting here. So the majority of my day is spent sat down. Um, so yeah, glutes stronger, lots of squats. Um, Brian, I feel every little incline. <laughs> so do I, mate. Uh, Brian, you hear it fine. Awesome. Okay, I've not experienced the audio. Okay, cool. Um, audio is fine. Okay, so it might be yours, mate. I'm not 100% sure. Irish phone runner. Um, Mark, isn't it? Um, Jeffrey, also sit in front of a PC all day. Oh, mate, do you know what? If I could get rid of that, it, I would. Um... But I try and walk every 40 minutes just to stretch the legs. That's a good idea, mate. That's exactly what I've started doing. However, don't just stretch the legs. You need to try and every now and again activate the glutes. Um, this might make you laugh. It might make people, some people laugh. But something I've been told is when you sit there, tense your backside, each glute, um, alternate. Do that once an hour just for a minute or so. Just alternate tensing glutes whilst you're sat there. Get up, walk around keep them firing, keep them active, because otherwise if they stay sedentary, and I know it's quite a funny thing, but I've been told to do it. Um, yeah, nightmare. Anyway, guys, um, I haven't been keeping a check. So anyway, thank you so much for all for watching, by the way, so far. Um, how many's watching? Six are watching now. That's amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, Ian, you're desk bound as well. Good tips. Yeah, well, I... So Ian, this is for you, mate, in particular. If you ever have any issues, I see um, there's a chap around here called Chris Adams who runs our fitness. I'm going to get my camera. I'm going to go to his studio because he's a neurokinetic therapist. So he's not, he's like a physio, but he's not a physio. And he, he does lots of um, uh, muscle connections. So you've got your muscle chains. You've got your muscle chain that runs from down the front of your body, uh, which starts here 
goes all the way down to and to the front top of your feet and you've got the other one that starts here that goes all the way down the back and so he does all about connecting chains because I've had so many injuries to my right side my whole right side tends to get snarled up um, injured in some way shape or form I'll go there he will um, switch all the muscles back on that switched off do all that good stuff I get a really tight pelvis as well so um, like when I was playing football back in the summer I had a real bad tight pelvis I was trying to sprint and my it was like trying to pull concrete blocks. My legs were just not moving. Went to see him, uh, switched uh, my glutes back on because they weren't on, uh, did a few other bits. He's, he's amazing, mate. Chris Adams, Ad Fitness. Check him out if you ever have any issues. Um, Jeffrey will keep in mind, thanks. No worries. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ian, thank you. We'll check him out. Got issues with my neck. 100%, mate. My neck is a nightmare. So you might see it from the um, videos, you might not, I'm not sure what angles, but I have quite rounded shoulders. Um, I see the osteopath once a month, I see Chris, try and see him once a month, and I have a sports massage probably four times a year, but I get, I have a full body sports massage, and when they do my neck, literally, my arm can go up and over my shoulder behind. At the moment, it's going vertically up. When I've had a sports massage, it can literally go back over my shoulder, so everything loosens up. But after a while, when I don't see her, I sit here like this uh, straight, and slowly, as the weeks go on, I curl over like this, and then my neck gets tight. It's horrendous. All for working in front of a computer. Um, and that's it, guys. We're up to date. Guys, any other questions, just fire them in now. I'll hang on for another two minutes, and... Um, I will say thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciated it. I just want to say, whilst any more questions do come in, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate it loads, and I mean loads. Uh, I fired that question out a couple of weeks ago. Of I've been toying with this idea. I like the idea of not just coming on and talking, but coming on with a reason. Tonight was Trails versus Rose. I have a list as long as my arm of things to talk about. What I'm going to say is I'm going to be back Wednesday next week at the same time again. Um, for sure this was really enjoyable i've really enjoyed talking about it same format same thing um yeah thank you so much let's have a look if anything else has come in ian i have a sister-in-law who's a sportsman says look at oh jammy that is not fair ian great job on the first live event mate no worries at all. Thank you so much for joining me, mate. And as I said, anyway, guys, anyone, and I will say this to all of you that are in the chat now and anyone that's watching, everybody that's commenting at the moment has awesome channels. Click on their profile, subscribe to them if you are not, for sure. Um, Jeffrey, I used to have a hunchback too for years and I started doing Pilates. Ah, so did I. Let's talk about that quickly. Uh, and sports yoga has helped me to have a much straighter back. That's awesome. Okay. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'm going to use my pen to be serious. So, um, yes, I did Pilates for a long time and it helped a lot. And then I started getting issues. Now, I have the worst weak core in the world. I'm six foot six, nearly six foot seven. I have a really weak core. I went through doing all these 30 day challenges. I did Pilates, did all of that. And I went to this Chris Adams and I said to him, mate, I'm doing all this stuff. My back feels like it's blowing out. I'm getting excruciating stabbing pains. I'm like, what's going on? And he looked at me and he went, you're six foot six, you have a weak core, and you're trying to do sit-ups and push-ups and planks. What are you doing, man? That's like a sausage dog. You know a sausage dog with really long backs? And as they get older, they get back issues because their back sags like that. Well, effectively, when I plank, my back goes like that and puts more pressure on my muscles. He said, you are the exception to the rule. You need to not be doing that sort of thing. You need to be doing, doing other core exercises. Which guys, I will do my own video on about my core routine to help improve my core because I just can't, I can't do the standard core stuff. So I had to give up Pilates, although I still do the odd Pilates move uh, that works um, in terms of uh, stretching out my back. So I roll my back every day without fail. I've got a foam roller, I roll it, that's great. Um, but yeah, Pilates is amazing for anyone and I would highly recommend it for anyone. It just didn't work for me. Um... Irish Fenner, what's your opinion on high intensity interval training? I did some of that last night, mate, I think. High oh, sorry, hit hit training, you mean, hit training. Um not I'm not an expert, so I 
I'm not going to comment too much on it. However, um, I don't do it um, purely from a point of view that I would rather, as a runner, I'd rather do some more running specific training. I think HIIT training is great workout for uh, like an all body workout. And to be fair, mate, someone like me could do with it because I have weak weak muscles um, everywhere, especially my core. And that's more the type of workout, like squats and um, squats included in, in HIIT stuff, high intensity interval training, all that sort of stuff does me good. And that's more the type of thing I do for core workout, but I don't do HIIT training a lot. I My week, and you'll see next week in my video, so it's a bit of a spoiler alert, but um, next week I've got a video coming out of, of my week in running and I talk about the sessions that I do. At the moment, as I'm tuning up for 10K, I'm doing, uh, last week I did 200s, this week I did 300s, next week I do 400s, um, and I'm just progressing that for these shorter races. Um, but progressing, basically, my weekly interval training, the aim of the game is from the start to when I get to my races, to, is to each session have spent longer in that threshold, um, in that high-end zone, uh, so I did two miles, uh, just over two miles of 200 last week. This week I did 2.6 miles of a workout. Next week I'll do 400s. It'll be more like three miles or just over. So it's just that working that progression through. And I, I personally would rather do interval training that way rather than the high like hit stuff or high intensity. Um, just because that's I'd rather be running specific. So. A, I could do with doing it, but B, I'd rather do running specific stuff. But I'm not an expert, mate, so don't quote me on any of that. Uh, love this too, despite getting here late. Mate, you didn't get here too late. Don't worry about it at all. It's awesome to chat. It's nice to catch up with you. Uh, you were really positive on my feedback and I really appreciate it on when I, this came about. So it's awesome that you've managed to tune in. I hope your knee is better and I hope you can run the 10k. We'll obviously talk before then on future on future videos, but that's awesome. Um, so that's it, guys. There's no more questions. So I'm going to sign out now. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate all your support tonight. It's been ace. This has been great fun. It's been an awesome Wednesday evening as opposed to me just sat down rolling out my legs after a run or my back or whatever. Uh, it's been great to share this with you. Um, if you have any other questions, drop them on the video after this saves and I'll answer them. But yeah, thank you so much, guys. Um, Brian, take care, mate. Thanks for doing this. No worries, mate. Thank you for tuning in. Jeffrey, this is very awesome. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you for posting the um, uh, comment in the group. You're a legend. It's awesome. And best of luck this weekend for your double header. Everyone wish Jeffrey luck. He's got a double heading race this, uh, this weekend. One Saturday, one Sunday. And I think I'm right in saying one's charity, which is even better. So, top man. Good work. Best of luck. Um, Jeffrey, cheers, everyone. Yeah, right. Anyway, guys. This has been Andy, the Forest Team Runner. Thank you so much for tuning into my first live stream. Definitely same time next week with a new topic. Let's do this again. Till next time.